Hi, hello. Welcome into another episode, another post game show from No One Asked Us. Illinois Falls for the first time this season, 70 to 61 to the Virginia Cavaliers in Las Vegas. Had a chance to bring home a title and a belt. I couldn't quite pull it out. Thanks for joining. I'm Craig Schott. That is Logan Lee. We are the hosts of No One Asked Us that we released weekly, um, covering all things sports, and we dabble in some entertainment and pop culture here and there. Um, follow us on our social media channels. Uh, those are listed on the pages. If you are watching us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, or uh, Periscope, um, they're right in front of you. If not, they're in the description wherever you are listening. I'm at Craig W. Choate. He's at the Logan Lee at No One Asked Us Pod on Twitter. For however long it's still around at no one asked the pod on instagram also uh, on facebook wherever you can find us thanks for listening while you're here uh whether you're listening to this live we are doing this live whether you're listening live or on a podcast format at a later time like and subscribe like and subscribe to the video our content our numbers continue to grow thank you so much to everyone that has watched the last two post game shows some of our biggest audiences yet and we continue uh to praise you guys for listening to us ramble on about this illinois basketball team as for tonight 70 to 61 illinois falls um it was a battle all the way through it's a nine point final score uh difference but it was uh i think the biggest lead up until five minutes left was five or six for virginia so it was a close game all the way through uh normally after losses i'm, I'm pretty beat down and pretty upset but um i'm not in a terrible mood i, I think this team is in an upward trajectory, and I'm very excited to um, to watch uh, where this goes from here. So, Logan, how you doing, man? Are you in the same mindset, or are you uh, pissed off? No, I'm not pissed off. I mean, I'm certainly frustrated with some things down the stretch and how this game ended. Um, I think Virginia is a good team. Uh, I think that this Illinois team uh, still has some things they have yet to figure out, and that's kind of to be expected. Um, this team is now four and one. Those first three wins came against, quite frankly, nobody. Uh, Friday was a it was a huge move step in the right direction. I don't think uh, today this, the Virginia game is a step in the wrong direction, uh, right. but it just kind of shows where some of the things are that this team needs to work on. Uh, and the good thing is that it's it's only November twentieth, so there is a lot of basketball to be played. Uh, still, a lot of games to be played in the non conference season. Uh, but this is a good win. This is not a loss to to hold your head about. Yes, uh, you have to be a little upset with how it ended. Um, this was a one point game with about I don't know four minutes to go, and then it just kind of went downhill from there. I don't know the exact time on it, but things unraveled pretty quickly. Yeah, there it is. So yeah, it, things just kind of unraveled quickly, uh, and we'll get into some of the nuts and bolts as to why that happened. But no, I, I'm certainly not angry. Uh, I probably did have an explicit or two come out of my mouth at some point towards the into the game, but uh, that's kind of to be expected. So no, not, nothing to be upset about, nothing to be mad about. And, but uh, I'm, you know, it's just, it's just a, it's obviously a, you know, an educational experience, I think for a lot of these guys. Yeah, for sure. So I run through the stats, uh, led in scoring for tonight, uh, Jaden Epps, 14 points for Jaden Epps, six of 13 from the field, two of five from three, four rebounds for him. Uh, no assist. Next up, uh, Coleman Hawkins had a, had a pretty, Pretty nice night. He still made his Coleman Hawkins mistakes, but 10 points for him. Uh, only one rebound, but he had three assists and three block shots, and all of them were pretty big block shots. Uh, Terrence Shannon with nine, RJ Melendez with eight, uh, Sky Clark with eight, Dane Danger five, Matthew Meyer four, Sincere Harris three. Um, rebounding was, was kind of even across the board. Shannon, Meyer uh, each had four, Danger had five. Um, shooting. 47, 40.7% for the Illini, 34.6 from the field, uh, from three, but uh, four of nine from the free throw line. We're going to talk about that here in a little bit. Um, this Virginia team is just the epitome of consistent. Um, I really, really love the makeup of this Virginia team uh, from top to bottom, both ends of the floor. Um, offensively, they are sound as you can be. They don't make a ton of mistakes. They make the right shots, or they take the right shots, and they normally make the shots um, that they do take. They were a little below average, their season average today from the field, uh, 41.7% from the field, 29.4 from three. Um, but they got to the line. They shot 32 free throws. That's one of our keys we're going to talk about here in a little bit. Um, so that's uh, kind of the rundown of the stat numbers. Um, we were kind of looking at them before we, we got on here live, and not a huge disparity in any aspect. 
Um, everything was pretty similar except for those free throws. So um, heading to our key three here. Uh, before we do that, though, um, if you do, if you are joining us, get in the chat, uh, ask us some questions, tell us what you think. Um, where you like? Do you like where the team's at, or are you anything of concern for you? Uh, just get in the chat and let us know what you think uh, of the game today. Um, first key for us was Jaden Epps. Obviously, he was the leading scorer. Um, I didn't know – it's not something I, that I thought about like every day. It was kind of unexpected. I did not think Jaden Epps would be – would lead a game in scoring, lead the team in scoring at all this season, honestly, uh, let alone the fourth or fifth game of the season. But 14 points for him. We touched on him Friday, how he didn't fill up the stat sheet, but we thought he played very well. Uh, without him today, this is a blowout. Massive blowout because all of his shots, for the most part, came in big moments when Illinois needed a bucket. You had a specific tweet about him. Yeah, he, he is the definition of what the kids call a bucket. Um, the kid can score. He can get to the basket. He can shoot from distance. Um, he just he knows how to score. And he's um, – I, I think he's just another guy on this team that, that has the ability to do this. I think there are – Several guys that will lead this team in scoring throughout the course of the season. I wasn't sure if he'd be one of them this early in the season, um, but he is. He he can play. Um, you know, props to him. You know, fourteen points, two for five from three, six for thirteen from the field. Um, was one of only two Illini scorers in double figures. He he can score. He can score. This team's not going to have an issue. Um, I shouldn't say that. This team will have issues scoring. They've clearly showed it at times. Um, but they have enough guys that can do it. He's one of them. Um, yeah, and you love to see that really as a freshman point guard coming into the season as essentially the the second of two uh, freshman point guards. Um, he's he's going to fill a lot of holes on this team and, and do a lot of – fill a lot of roles and do a lot of things. Uh, but it's nice to know that they can count on him to get some points too. Um it's probably not – it's probably doesn't – probably not a good thing when he's your leading scorer and he finishes with 14 points. I don't yeah. think that you're going to win many games when that's the case. Nothing against ter- nothing against Jay Nepps, um, but that's probably not something you're going to see very often. Uh, yeah. it's that you just – you need more from other guys who didn't really show up much today. Yeah, I think he's more comfortable in the offense and playing um, at a college level right now than Sky Clark is. Yeah, Sky um, Clark did not Sky, play Sky much in the had first his half. Moments. He's played five minutes, or no, seven minutes in the first half. Jaden played yeah. the other 13. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I think Jaden is ahead of Sky. I don't want to say leaps and bounds, but he's a step or two ahead of Sky so far. Um, yeah. nothing to change the starting lineup about. Um, Brad's no. not into that anyways. I think Sky's still playing pretty well for a freshman. It's just Jaden looks a little bit more comfortable uh, through five games than Sky Clark does. Um, I touched on this in the kind of intro, but the free throw disparity was the key tonight uh, or today, whatever, this afternoon. Um, Virginia shot 32 free throws. Illinois shot nine. Um, so there's... I don't have it pulled up right at the moment. That's 21 point differential at the free throw line. This isn't a knock on the refs whatsoever. I I'm one to go at refs when I think it's warranted. I don't think there's anything that warranted um, any critiques of the officiating today. It's just the style of play. It's the style of play. Virginia plays sound defense. Illinois is what was the first game coordinated chaos. Illinois is, out and they're slapping at the ball and trying to get deflections and all that. And that's going to lead to fouls. Um, and it did tonight uh, four for nine for Illinois, 25 for 32 for Virginia. That's your game right there. Everything else in the stats was similar. Um, field goal percentage was one percentage off three point percentage. Illinois shot better from three um, 13 turnovers for Illinois, 12 for Virginia, 37 rebounds for Virginia, 34 for Illinois. Like everything was right here. It was right here. Except for free throws. Yeah. Uh, part of that, I think, um, Terrence Shannon could not get to the free throw line. And when he was there, he yep. wasn't making shots. The first three games of the season, Terrence averaged over 10 free throws, free throw yep. attempts per game. 
and the two games in Las Vegas, um, he shot seven against UCLA on Friday and just two today. So in Vegas, he was three for nine from the free throw line. Um, that's going to be his bread and butter this year is getting to the, is getting to driving to the hoop, getting to the line. Um, and he, that, I mean, he can't credit all, you can't say that that was all of it, but when he, when that's, when he's your best player and that's what a lot of his game is and he doesn't do it, you're going to have an issue. Um, so not only were they not getting there, but they weren't really hitting them very well either. Uh, so the free throw certainly is something to to be concerned about. I don't know if it'd be concerned about, but you have to look at that as obviously a, a flaw in, in what happened today. Yeah, you got to get to the line. This team has to get to the line because they're easy buckets. And I think for the most part, this team is a pretty good free throw shooting team. So um, yeah. need to see more of that. Uh, and then our third key three is just mistakes. Um, late game, simple mistakes, um, leaving guys open, taking bad shots, I think was is number one. There were some bad shots taken in the last five minutes of this game. Um, were they open shots? Probably for the most part, but I don't think they're the shots that you want when you're in a one possession game or a two possession game trying to make a comeback. Um, so just some small mistakes that this team's going to go through. Um, this is a team that right now, seven of the nine that are in the rotation are new to an Illinois uniform. So mistakes are going to happen. And tonight, I think, was the first night that they really reared their head and cost the team uh, the game. Yeah. I mean, this is – Virginia's a good team. And you talked about it um, in our show on Friday. They, they just – they're not going to make a lot of mistakes. Um, they're going to be a, a well-coached, well, just very sound team mechanically. And granted, they did have some tonight, but uh, yeah, you just you can't afford to make those kind of mistakes against these kind of these kind of teams. It's just going to cost you down the stretch. And I don't know that Virginia is necessarily a better team than Illinois. Uh, if these two teams played, you know, ten times throughout the course of the season, I I think it's be fairly even. Um, but you, you got to cut down on those. That's, that's really going to hurt you. Um, especially as you talked about really down the stretch is where these mistakes mostly came, um, was in the last few minutes. Yeah. And you touched on it. Credit to Virginia. I think they are the cause for a lot of that. Kihei Clark, outstanding Royce, Roy, Reese Beekman. What's his first name? R Reese Beekman, um, played fantastic down the stretch. And we know Armand Franklin, Illinois tried to recruit him. Um, out of Indiana a couple of years ago, he chose Virginia. And those guys have the experience, unlike Illinois, who had four freshmen on the on the floor uh, multiple times um, tonight. One more thing before we move on to our um, next portion here. Have you looked at the plus minus yet? Yeah, it's bad. It's real bad. It's of, very a of, bad. A lot of bad. A lot of bad. In there. The starting five for Illinois. Terrence Shannon, minus 12. RJ Melendez, minus 12. Matthew Meyer, minus 5. Coleman Hawkins, minus 13. Sky Clark, minus 11. Dane Danger, also minus, minus 1. Sincere Harris, plus 7, and he played 9 minutes. Why did Sincere yep. Harris only play 9 minutes? And then Jaden Epps and Ty Rogers, both plus 1. So 3 of the 9 players that played were plus in the plus minus. The uh, Everyone else, minus and five, four of them minus by double digits. So um, just not good. Not good. Um, Virginia closed the game on a 14-3 to three run uh, to, to take the win. Got one comment here. Just We just touched on it. Can't make free throws. Uh, yeah, I mean, less than 500, four of nine, but you got to get to the free throw line too, which we just touched on. You got to get there to shoot them um, to improve that uh, average because – this team's better than a four and nine free throw team. Um, if they shoot the same amount of free throws that Virginia shoots, uh, 32, I mean, they probably make 20 of them. So there's 11 points right there, and that's a dub. So just got to get to the free throw line um, so you can make the free throws. Uh, speaking of, if you're still, if you're hitting here, we are live. Get in the chat, make comments. We will show them. We'll talk about some of them. Um, what'd you like? What didn't you like? And, or, Anything. You can ask us anything. Ask us our favorite soda. Ask us our favorite restaurant. Whatever. We're, we're here to please. Ask us anything. Uh, who was your everyday guy of the game, Logan? <laughs> I mean, the best player on the court tonight was Jaden Epps. Um, we've already touched on him. 14 points, four rebounds. 
Um, he's a bucket. He's a bucket. And on a night that your best player is very limited in terms of his scoring, um, it's easy to, easy to go with Jaden Epps. He, I don't know that he'll do this on a consistent basis. And as I've already said, you can't really uh, count on him being your leading scorer if you're going to win a lot of games. But um, he, he looked good tonight and uh, was one of the only, I don't want to say the only, was probably the best looking guy on the court offensively for the Illini. So that was easy for me to come in there and claim that one first. Yeah, I thought late in the game he tried to do too much at times. Um, but also um, he was the only one that was doing anything. So he needed to be the guy with the ball in his hands, even though I still would have liked it to be Terrence Shannon in, in that situation. But don't disagree with you there. I'm going with Dane Danger. Um, stat, again, stat, stats don't pop off the page. Um for Dane tonight, um, or as Fran Fertiola says, Dane Danger, um, five points, six rebounds, but the dude plays every second he's on the court. He just plays, especially that that play that they ended up reviewing for a couple minutes to see what it was. He was diving on the court, 280 coming right down at you, trying to get the loose ball. Um, I just love to see it, and I think – I think all nine guys and 10 once Luke Goody comes back will be like that. Um, this team's not going to be soft when it comes to that. I think there are certain aspects that this team is a little bit soft. Um, they haven't been an issue yet, but they can have their moments where this team gets soft. But for the most part, they're going to play hard. They're going to make the right plays. Um, but I, I just love the energy Dane Danger brings. I just don't know that today's matchup was the best for him because they had those seven footers that he couldn't get the shot up over. He made some of those bad shot selections, I thought, late in the game as well. He tried to get too much uh, hero ball from him. He did only take five attempts, but that's where he's gonna guess. he's gonna dominate lower level opponents. Um, yeah, they won't have an answer for him. Uh, but some of these teams, like a Virginia and like some of these other better teams with better post players that you're going to see in the Big Ten. I don't know how effective Dane's going to be on a consistent basis. Uh, I'm glad that he's here. I'm glad that he's in line. I, uh, I think he's going to be in a great – he's going to be great for this team. But he's kind of somewhere – he's closer to one end of the spectrum, but he's somewhere in between Kofi and BBV. He's, he's closer to Kofi. Closer but, to Kofi, yeah. I mean, I get that that's a wide spectrum. I understand yeah. that that doesn't, you know, like, duh, obviously. But he's kind of similar to that where he's kind of – he's going to be undersized when it comes to some of these other fives that he's going to go up against. Yeah. Um, but he's more skilled than what, like, a BBV was. He's more comp to Kofi in terms of his skill set. He's but, more skilled than Kofi. Yeah. I'll say that right yes, now. I think he He's is. more skilled than Kofi. He's not going to yeah. put up Kofi numbers – yeah, uh, but he's more skilled and better around the basket than Kofi was. Kofi only had like two moves that he could go to. Uh, another comment from Fro Dog: a lot of one-on-one ball need to run offense. I made that uh, assumption yep. uh, in my group chat. Uh, TSJ there on I think three straight possessions just tried to do too much. Yep, tried to do too much. There was like eight minutes left, um, and uh, he was trying to get to the basket. But it's Virginia. Virginia's not going to let you do what you want to do. You got to do other things. Um, so yeah, Fro Dog, I we agree uh, a lot of one on one when it got to half court. Um, that needs to improve. And then one more, Kaylee. Good to see you, Kaylee. Nice to have RJ back from the dead. Mostly, yeah. Um, stat line first half. Yeah, stat line didn't first look half. great. Eight, eight points and nothing else contributing to the stat line. Uh, eight points, three fouls, two turnovers, and one steal. Um, he made it, all but, eight of yes. those points were right off the bat. Were really early on. In they the game. were. They were um, very early to get us to get Illinois started. But then, yeah, after that, he was kind of non-existent. But yeah, he's he's going to you know, he's going to go through spurts, too. I mean, they just got to find consistency with some of these guys. Yeah. They're, they're still figuring out the rotation. They're still figuring out roles. Um, you know, they'll they'll get all that stuff together. But yeah, he was he was definitely nice early on in this game. And then he kind of went. Yep. Dark. yep. Uh, good and bad. Logan, you hit it first. Um. <sighs> I think the good for me, I mean, as I mentioned, I think earlier, only three turnovers, I think, in the first half, which compared to Friday night where turnovers were a huge issue, even though they won that game. Um, what is this? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt uh, you. <laughs> distracted. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, 
you know, the turnovers was nice to see. Granted, the pace, the pace of play was a little slower, um, so you're not going to have as many opportunities. But they took a lot better care of the ball in the first half, especially. Um, that was probably one of the, the highlights, you know, from, from this team. Uh, the bad, this is not totally a knock on them, just because some shots weren't going down. Um, but Terrence Shannon has to be the guy. He's he is the yeah. best player on this team. Struggle um, tonight. We've we've Illinois has been fortunate enough the past couple seasons to have a guy who can take over um, with Io a couple years ago and and Trent last year. I mean more so even than Kofi. Um, Trent was able to take over games. Um, Terrence, granted, yes, he wasn't making shots tonight. He wasn't getting to the free throw line. Um, and I know he was trying to do things at the end, like you talked about. He was trying to go one on one on some situations, but he has. They have to be setting him up to score. Um, they can't rely on Jaden Epps to be to be the guy with the ball in his, in his hands when they need the points at the end. I, I know that he had the he had his fourteen points tonight, but if TJ if TJ Shannon's going to be the best player on this team, which he is, he's yeah. got to be the guy. He has to be the guy they count on down the end at the end of the game when they're down four points or whatever, and they need a bucket. Uh, they have to go through him. I don't even know that he touched the ball on a few of those, on a few of those possessions. Um, there, there were a couple times where they went down and there were no, there was a couple times players. where he tried to do too much. And there was a couple times where he didn't even touch the ball. Um, so those are not things that you want uh, in that situation. I think he just has to be the guy. Yep. Uh, my good. And it's kind of all encompassing from the, uh, the weekend. Uh, I think this weekend shows that Illinois is the second weekend of the NCAA tournament team. Uh, they're a team that should make it to the second weekend. They have the talent. They have they have the horses, and they have the defense. Fro Dog in the com in the chat here just said defense was great. I agree. the The defense is going to keep this team in games, and I think what I've seen specifically this weekend, those first three games, those were tune ups. Those were exhibition games whatever preseason games that actually count to your record. But I saw enough this weekend that I'm confident in this team, much better built uh, for a March run. And now that we've seen it on the court, I, I, I that doesn't change anything. I, I think this team's going to be uh, top of the big 10 team. Uh, if they stay healthy, top of the big 10 team and uh, a second weekend NCAA tournament team. So that's my good from the weekend. Uh, my bad I touched on it a little bit. Um, in our in the key three segment, um, just the so shot selection. Um, I didn't love it. I didn't love it down the stretch. I don't know if that's the inexperience coming through or the cohesion of the team coming through, but um, there were a lot of times in the last eight minutes of the game that Illinois just threw some stuff up, and uh, I know Dane Danger had a little lefty hook that he probably should have kicked out. Jaden Epps had a couple that I think could have – could have worked the offense a little bit more, um, but I, I didn't love the shot selection or the play for the last eight minutes of the game. All right, we're going to get in the chat here a um, couple more times. Where did we leave off? I'll just do this one real quick. Um, game day spirit. Shout out game day spirit. Um, I've had this for a couple <laughs> years, but uh, if you're if you're looking for it, this uh, crew neck from game day spirit, the vintage fighting Illini. Um Let's get Bruce in here. Bruce Sheridan. No microaggressions, please. Uh, <laughs> way, way out of balance. Yeah, Bruce, we touched on that earlier. Uh, free throw disparity was uh, 21. Is that what we said? 21. Yeah, 39 for Virginia, 9 for Illinois. Virginia made 25. Illinois made 4. So, yeah, um, if Illinois shoots the same amount or even 10 more free throws, um, they probably make 6 or 7 of them, and it's a one-possession game and completely um, – Completely changes the the end of this game, and then one more from Frodog here. I haven't even read this yet. Defense is great, but offense is behind, which is to be expected. I think by January we're going to do a lot of damage in the conference. Yeah, exactly. I 100% agree with that. Um, this team will be completely different in January and February than it is right now, and that's scary because they just knocked off a top 10 team <laughs> in their fourth game of the season. Uh, so we'll we'll see where this team goes. Uh, in January. All right, we got a visitor here. Logan, you got anything you want to say? <laughs> no, I mean, I think I think this team's good, and I I know that you know you, you never want to see a, see a loss, and I think that this game was within reach. Um, got to find some figure some things out because the competition gets a little even more tougher than this. I think uh, Texas is coming up here real quick, um, and that's a pretty loaded team. Um, so, got to be happy with the result on Friday and with the effort on Friday. 
Um, didn't quite come out with the same defensive tenacity this game. Um, it was just it was just a different ball game altogether. Virginia is just a different type of team, and you know it's you, you take something and you learn something from every game, every opponent, even the uh, Eastern Illinois of the world. I mean, you, you're going to yeah. learn something every game um, as a team, and there's a lot you can learn from this one. So pick it up. Uh, you get a you know what should be an easy one uh, coming up at the end of this week, um, and then you know things things get a little more tricky. So just got to keep on doing what you're doing. As I think I said, happy with one win. Um, yeah. Yep. I think uh, three wins was within reach at one point this weekend. So um, to get one of them is – I'm good. <laughs> I'm content. So, yeah, touching a little nugget on football there. Um, we'll talk about that in our show coming up in the Love next couple of days. Um, <laughs> might get some for dinner tonight, actually, now that we're talking about nuggets. Um, what do you think this team does at halftime? Because Friday night and tonight – Underwood had to call timeout with like only a minute into the second half because they were just like asleep. Do they take naps in the locker room at halftime? I, I don't what? know. And I don't know because yesterday, funny. Friday, this first, this second half didn't exactly start off well either. It wasn't That's until Sincere Harris came into the game two minutes later um, yeah. that things really changed. I don't, I have no idea. I have no idea yeah. what sort of halftime adjustments they make. I don't know what sort of motivational pep talks are going on in that locker room but yeah they don't exactly come out of the half strong yeah um that's something that will need to be addressed i think at some point because yeah that's gonna continue to hurt you if, if you keep doing that um we're about ready to sh- ready to shut it down so if you do have any more comments or any questions for us get them in the chat now because after we go over the next game we are going to shut it down so if you got anything you want to say let us know um next up is the 25th. Is that Friday? That's Friday, right? It is. It is Friday. Yeah, Friday, Friday night. Friday. Uh, Lindenwood, a uh, brand new Division One opponent from the OVC, just moved up to Division One. 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Central. Um, this is the final game on Big Ten Plus, BTN Plus. So you're going to have to pay for this one. If you already paid for the – what game was the first one? Was it, it wasn't the exhibition, was it? It wasn't. Yeah, it was. That's the only game that's been exhibition. on this. Quincy. Okay, if you uh, if you paid for the exhibition stream, then you should be good. Um, but then don't forget to cancel it uh, after Friday night. So um, this is another one of those. It. You can keep it. You can keep it, but <laughs> you might know what people might want to watch other sports that are on there. That's true. Never... Women's basketball is averaging like ninety points a game. Exactly. See, you could watch women's basketball. That's true. That's true. Um, Lindenwood is 343 in Ken Palm out of 363. So um, I believe, okay, Eastern is 352. So this is another game that you should win by 25 or 30. That's, yep. there's nothing more you can say. This, there's no reason to, for this game to even be close, but that's the next game. Um, let's see here. If we do have one more from, hey, I'm trying to talk here. <laughs> we do have one more from Fred. <laughs> Uh, I thought the key turning point was the four minute left. The refs didn't call Vanderplas for hooking. Matthew Meyer nearly does look at his shoulder. Also, we gave it to you on free throws. Yeah, uh, oh, I'll leave it up here. That hook and hold is a that's an interesting one. Uh, the broadcast was saying that Meyer kind of flopped it, and uh, I tend to agree. I know you. I think it could have gone either way, but I do think Vanderplas just kind of he grabbed the rebound and just turned. He didn't try and hook Matt Meyer's. He didn't try and hook the arm, but it just happened to to be there um i don't know i don't know that that was the key i just think virginia played better down the stretch than illinois did i think uh, i mean i think the game kind of did turn at that point i think that that's i think that's accurate but i don't think that that was necessarily that miss that bad of a missed call i I think it could go either way um but yeah, yeah that's that's i think that is really where things started to turn in virginia's favor regardless of what the call was yeah you want to say something are you trying to talk no um okay uh anything else before we shut it down he i think he wants to say something Uh, clearly all right uh friday night uh nine o'clock eastern eight o'clock in the chat btn plus uh we will um it is holiday now um that's the that's black friday i don't know where either of us will be logan might be in the land of no wi-fi so um we'll, we'll see what happens we haven't talked about next week yet but uh, during the holidays these shows might become more sporadic uh until we both get back to our hometowns so unless logan has anything else logan does not uh logan's logan just happy not. to be here logan's happy that we got a win against ucla and um logan's 
Over under. Ready for Lindenwood. Over under. Where is Illinois ranked in the next poll? Over under 13 and a half. Higher than 13? Higher 13 and above or 14 and lower? I'd have to look at everybody in the rankings right now. I would say oh, no. under, I would probably say around 15. I think they will move yeah. up a few spots. I yep. think probably in 13 to 15 range would be my guess. Had they won this game, you might be looking at top 10. Uh, but I, I'm i not sure that that's the case. It's not like a lot of top teams are losing right now. Um, so I don't I don't think they're a top 10 team right now, and I – I think 13 to 15 is probably realistic come Monday. Yep. Um, but I wouldn't be shocked either way. But they'll definitely move up yep. a little bit for sure. Yep, I agree. I agree. They played well. Um, like I said, I think by the end of the season, this could be a top 10 team. So um, thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we love all you guys. Thank you for the support. This channel is – it keeps growing. We hit 300 subscribers uh, within the last 12 hours, which – just a month ago we hit 200 so thank you all if you haven't subscribed please subscribe like the video and we'll continue to to do these post game shows as often as we can we can't say we're going to do them every game but we're going to do them as often as we can because um people continue to watch so as long as you continue to watch we'll continue to do them thanks again see you next week bye